Hello fellow HubSpotters, this is Emma with Kiwi Creative, and today we're talking about connecting your company's domains to HubSpot. Connecting your domains may sound uh, scary and technical, but by completing this exercise, you can quickly and easily improve your HubSpot reporting as well as improve your user's experience. You can connect domains in each of HubSpot's five hubs and at all subscription tiers. So listen up. In this video, I will explain what domain connections are not, uh, define what connecting a domain actually means, talk about the different types of domains you can connect, review the benefits of connecting domains, and demonstrate how to actually connect them. So let's first talk about what domain connection is not. First things first, connecting your domains in HubSpot does not mean you have to move your website from WordPress or wherever it exists naturally into HubSpot CMS. You do not have to buy additional hubs. You do not have to upgrade to a different tier. Domain connection does not affect your existing website in any way. Changing your domains does not mean you have to make your website changes in HubSpot. What it is, however, is a way to improve HubSpot's ability to report on your contacts' interactions with your assets and improve your user's experience by providing a smooth transition between your website and the assets you do create in HubSpot. In essence, you're piggybacking off of your company's URL and adding a prefix based on the type of HubSpot asset. There are six different types of domains you can connect. There are five on this page. There is a sixth that I'll get to in a little bit. And as you can see here, we have website, blog, landing page, email, and knowledge base. Now, a few points to note. This email is in reference to the web version of an email you send. So you know those emails you get in the top right hand corner, it'll say view in browser. That's what this is referring to. Also, knowledge base and customer portal, you'll only see should you have service hub. So you don't have to worry about that. And based on these types of assets here, you get to pick uh, the prefix or the correct name for it, the subdomain for each type of domain you want to connect. Best practice dictates that the subdomain is short, sweet, and descriptive. So for example, blog could be blog.mycompany.com with the word blog being the subdomain. Uh, often you'll see landing pages say info dot or resources dot my now that we talked about those a little bit, I will now show you how to go ahead and build them. Now to successfully complete this exercise, you will need access to your DNS provider. So that could be yourself, it could be a member of your IT team, perhaps your web vendor. Uh, typically connecting with that person actually proves to be the most difficult part of this process. So in order to connect your domains, we will visit the settings cog in the top right hand corner. In the left hand sidebar, Scroll on down to the Tools section. Open up Website, and your very first option, Domains and URLs, is what we'll click on here. So there are a few different categories, primary, secondary, redirected, and the final one, Email Sending. Email Sending is that sixth domain type I mentioned earlier, different than the web version of the email. So in today's video, we'll discuss primary and email sending. We won't be hitting on secondary or redirected. To begin the process, simply click connect a primary domain. And you'll recognize this page. We were just here. Now you can pick one at a time or all of these. Um, I find it's often easy to say, well, maybe one day we'll do a blog in HubSpot. Go ahead and connect it now. Uh, there's no harm, no foul, should you connect some of these domains and then not use the assets. Something to point out, the only time you have to connect your website pages domain is if your website really is HubSpot CMS. So in this instance, I'll just connect blog, landing page, and email. Remember, that's the web version. Here I'll enter my primary domain. So in my instance, it's Kiwi creative.net and this setup wizard will hold your hand the whole way. So here's where I can specify that subdomain, that prefix we talked about. I want to go ahead and say blog dot. Oh, see, of course I was added by another. Yeah, of course I was me. So let's go ahead and make one up here. 
acme. Okay. We'll now call this blog.acme.net, info.acme.net, and email. This is an example of what they'll look like. Again, this is holding our hand along the way. Now, when I get to this hosting setup and this verification, this is where we need the help of whoever has access to your DNS settings. If that's you, great. Um, I will include additional information on how to do this linked below the video, should you need to share that. Uh, but pretty much your web resource, perhaps yourself, has to copy the DNS information, paste it into the DNS provider, and then click verify. So in this instance, maybe I'm not verifying because obviously I haven't done that. That's okay. You'll notice these domains are sitting there waiting for me, right? So maybe I, I the marketer, can do this and I have to wait for that additional help. That's okay. I can continue that at any time. So that's how we connect those primary domains. Now, the exercise for connecting the email sending is nearly identical. I really want you to pay attention to this email sending domain because at the very least, maybe you don't want to blog, you don't want to touch landing pages with a 10-foot pole. Connecting your email sending domain ensures, helps your emails not end up in spam. So this is really important if you're using HubSpot as a email marketing tool. Same exercise, we'll head on down email sending, we'll click connect a domain. In this instance, Who's one of the emails? Well, Emma at Acme, don't you know? My made up company. Same setup wizard. I'll click next. It's saying, oh, so your emails will be sent from name at acme.net. Now, pro tip, you can add more than one email sending domain. So perhaps there's a parent company or you're doing business as, you can set up multiple email sending domains to send emails from that company. You'll notice here, same thing, a little bit different type of data, but exactly the same process that you or your IT resource will have to do. Copying data, putting it into the server, and verifying. Once again, I'll go back to domains because I can't verify my fake company. And you'll see here, acme.net is ready to be continued. Same thing. You can continue this exercise when you have your resource on hand. So we talked about why this exercise is important, right? Of course, it makes it easier for us internally to segment our assets. Oh, what's the landing page called again? Oh, resources dot, right? These two shots right here are examples of why we would connect it. These specifically are landing pages. This top bad example is an unconnected demo account we have. You can see here, cms-dev-pratcom-blah-blah-blah-blah.hubspotpagebuilder. That 22678704 is just my demo account account number. You'll see this URL does not inspire much confidence should I be a website user and I've clicked a button and I've now gone to this landing page. Perhaps I'll be a little skeptical, right? This bottom example is a Kiwi Creative landing page built in HubSpot. You can see here we've selected resources as a subdomain and what do you know? .kiwicreative.net. And the after slash is simply what we actually call on the landing page. So this example right off the way, right out the gate, if I'm a web visitor, uh, I will feel much more comfortable navigating to this landing page. This example here you'll see is actually the importance of connecting your email sending domain. This top example, once again, bad frowny face, you'll see who is it from? Well, it's from Kiwi, Kiwi via bf02.hubspotfree.net. Concerning, right? You'll also notice it's signed by hubspotfree.net versus the bottom example, an email that came from a connected HubSpot account. Who's it from? Marketing at Kiwi Creative. No via. And you'll notice here, who's it signed by? What do you know? Kiwi Creative. So right off the bat, your recipient spam filters will thank you because we're sending less suspicious messages since we've gone through this exercise of confirming our DNS and confirming our DKIM settings. So as you can see, uh, this exercise, certainly from the marketer's point of view, is not that scary. It's not that terrible. It actually has really big payoff if we go ahead and connect these domains. Remember, you don't have to connect all of them. You don't have to connect any of them. Should you only pick one, select email sending. You do not have to connect the website pages unless you are using HubSpot CMS as your web provider. But even if you're in doubt about using the knowledge base or the blog, Going ahead and connecting all these at once can save you time down the line. 
um, when we have to engage with potentially that outside IT resource. Don't forget, I've linked an article below that you can share with the folks that have to help us here. Um, but once we enlist their help, our landing pages, our blogs, our knowledge base, our emails will all look and perform better.